spot. Um, notwithstanding those warnings, the fact is it could be uh, unavoidable. Uh, those who are giving testimony to the Pentagon and to the government right now are, uh, for instance, uh, Professor Gregory uh, Stock. Uh, his book, Redesigning Humans, Our Inevitable Genetic Future. He says that stopping what we've started, that's a mirage. We simply cannot find the brakes. Uh, Werner Verge said the same thing. He said, even if all the governments of the world were to understand the threat and be in deadly fear of it, progress toward the goal would continue because competitive advantages, economic, militarily, uh, and that in uh, societies uh, where they have tried to pass laws or have customs that uh, forbid the advancement of technology, all they do is merely assure that somebody else is going to get ahead of them. So academic scientists now, uh, technical consultants to the Pentagon believe that these principles, as extrapolated by Verna Vinge and others, that they are correct, and as a result, the United States now, and Steve, this based on their own actual uh, discourses, believe that we could be forced into large-scale species-altering output, including human enhancement for military purposes because the enemies of America are seeking to, to develop the same, and they will attempt to use it to subjugate the United States if they can, which is now quickly emerging <laughs> excuse me, as a, as a troubling scenario within government think tanks and intelligence agencies inside Washington, including the Jasons, the celebrated scientists on the Pentagon's most prestigious uh, scientific advisory panel, now perceive... And they're, what, and they're not really hiding it. Mankind 2.0 as the next arms race. I'm not kidding. Just as the old Soviet Union and the United States with their respective allies competed for supremacy in nuclear arms following the Second World War, the arms race, uh, the Jasons are worried about adversaries' ability to exploit advances in human modification and therefore create a threat to national security. There was a report on this, for anybody that wants to follow up, that Wired magazine recently titled, Top Pentagon Scientists Fear Brain-Modified Foes. It was a special report that was based on a leaked military report in which the Jasons were caught admitting concern over neuropharmaceutical performance enhancement, brain-computer interfaces technology, being developed by other countries ahead of the United States, and the Jasons are now recommending that the American military push ahead with its own performance enhancement human alteration research and also to monitor foreign studies to make sure that the enemies of the United States don't suddenly become more enhanced, smarter, faster, stronger, more Nephilim-like, that's my term, better able to endure the harsh realities of war than American troops. They are, they are concerned about new technology. Well, as a result, you may have seen this <coughs> just a few weeks ago. May 24, 2010, there was a wide range of experts from the military, the private sector, academia, they gathered in Washington, D.C. for what they called an important conference titled Warring Futures, a future tense event, how biotech and robotics are transforming today's military and how that is going to change the rest of us, end quote. Uh, they gathered there to explore how quickly human enhancement related technologies have literally overnight become part of what is described as a secret, though now emerging battlefield strategy that is going to inevitably migrate to the broader culture. That means it's, it's going to start in the military and then it's going to enhance everybody else. And what that means for the future of humanity as we know it. Uh, <coughs> I could read you some shocking um, commentary from their own website where they're talking about new technologies uh, and how everything now from peak warrior performance biology, i.e. human enhancement, is going to alter the nature of the military as an institution, as well as the ethics and strategy of combat. And they go, Steve, they go, uh, I, would, I would encourage somebody to follow up with me if they want to. I can give them the link where they can go and listen to four of the lectures given by this prestigious panel that met in Washington, D.C. 
talking about how this is going to absolutely change our understanding of asymmetrical conflict, new technologies, human technology. Uh, who were some of the speakers at the conference? Vice Admiral Joseph W. Dyer, who has retired from the U.S. Navy but is now the president of the uh, Government of Industrial and Rob Robotics Division at iRobot. Uh, Major General Robert E. Schmendel, United States Marine Corps lead for the 2010 Quadrennial Defense Review. Robert Wright, I don't know why they invited him. Oh, yes, I do. He's the author of The Evolution of God and a Global Governance Fellow. P.W. Singer, the Senior Fellow and Director of the 21st Century Defense Initiative at the Brookings Institution. Stephen Tillery from the Harrington Department of Bioengineering at Arizona State University. And last but not least, John Mogford, the acting uh, deputy director of the Defense Sciences offices at DARPA. <laughs> Steve, I could even I could even I could even read parts of one of the reports that these experts were looking at, and it would blow your mind because essentially they're talking about ultimately the radical remanufacturing of humans 2.0, they're talking about breakthroughs that have happened in the last 24 months um, into uh, brain mach machine um, interfacing. People still think, you know, that um, the um, leading edge in BMI technology, for instance, is monkeys and test humans who have had their cranium opened up and chips implanted inside their brains. Well, that and they're moving things, Congress and the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> could only yeah, hope. Yeah, yeah when you we, talk about chip monkeys, I mean, there's, that's my explanation for the insanity that reigns on the uh, Potomac. But I, I'm sorry, Tom. I, it, it, it's not that I'm trying to, you know, uh, be a smart aleck. It's just the fact is, is that you've got to realize that talk about a control group that seems to be pre-programmed to not only fund but bring about the very thing that we're spending hours talking about, it's those guys because it's still appropriations have to go through them. So let me just say this. I think we've got biological and cyborg experiments voting on rules and regulations and funding packages they don't even read because they're pre-programmed not to. That's my own two cents. <laughs> so, you know, continue. On. I, mean, I have here's, a cold. Here's, yeah, here's the. I have a cold, so don't have. make me laugh. Okay, the people that are out there that are paying for all this have no clue. Uh, you're soon to become a uh, Homo extinctus. Okay, and the thing is, is that and and by everything, I want to share something too because I want to bring this in. All of the climate manipulation, all of the food additives. You carry a lot of stuff on Raiders, Net, or Raiders News Network uh, that, that it leads to the conclusion that somebody is working overtime to poison our food, poison our water, and poison our atmosphere. I have been told by generals in Special Operations Command, the guys that are, and there's no higher pay grade, that it is absolutely the a re, if you will, introduction of their word, not mine, primordial pre-flood atmosphere. Isn't that interesting? And yeah. if they're doing that, Tom, and just like lasers need something to be seen, it's the holographic interference with reality. I, I remember the, I gave a prophecy a number of years ago, uh, one and I got one, that basically the unseen will become seen, the things that you've only dreamt about or had nightmares uh, over will come into your realm. And, and that's literally what's happening. I mean, we're seeing, if you will, the demon forming, uh, and that's my word, of the atmosphere now of our food sources. We're being modified out of existence so that the new, if you will, transhumanist H plus can come in and take its place. Well, Steve, I know, you know, we've got 45 minutes in this show. I know that there's no way that we're going to get through all of this. So, um, you know, I'm sitting here wondering where we should go because uh, I, I, it would utterly shock some of the listeners to know well, what some of the... Because, no offense, uh, you know, if you can't uh, uh, right now until the power of God comes and raises the dead, 
you know, I think that uh, it's time to shock them. We can do the uh, UFO thing on a different two-hour when you've got time and I've got time, but let's just go ahead and shock with. When I say shock, I'm talking about, you know, I'm talking about shake yourselves, wake yourselves, and understand what's out there. By the way, I got an email saying, please don't scare me anymore. Well, turn this radio broadcast <laughs> off. This is reality. Why yeah. tune in? And, and, yeah, so, so let's go ahead. And I want, seriously, Tom, next 45 minutes, I want you to bottom line as, in, as you know, in, in, in where you feel comfortable, just give it to everyone the way it is because i I got to tell you something. This subject is too pertinent, too relevant, and too timely to sugarcoat or withhold anything. So go for broke. Well, uh, okay, so let me just very quickly, I'll, I'll give you an illustration from just one of the documents that was being reviewed this last week in Washington, D.C. Um, the, the whole point about it is, I'll summarize it because it's a very long article, so I'm not going to try, I mean a very long report, so I'm not going to try to read it. The whole point about it was that um, in 24 months, we have had such significant breakthroughs that we've moved way beyond those test humans and, and racist monkeys.